go ahead and get the main one off. Q load it around, we'll leave the you to talk, this switch right here. Okay. You're gonna pull this piece of paper out of there. Cellular? Don't have it. God damn. See you boys. Glad to be here, boss. You ever see Bill's copy? Yeah. Is he okay? Yeah, he's all right. Yeah. You know that he was in that damn trailer? I we know. didn't know it? Yeah, he's all right. He's okay. We, we took him in back. We took him home. Now.
we were sitting over there by the control rack. And about 4.30 we... Can I, if you're going to tell me, can, I, can we do it out here in the sun? Would that be okay? Yeah. I'm not dressed for video. No, too. no, I'll shoot you in there. I'll shoot you tight. It'll be okay. Let me my lights right. What happened? Well, basically, about 4.30, we heard this uh, uh, loud crash. And uh, it came down across the front of the building, and we thought something large had fallen off the tower. Um, we didn't expect that it was the tower itself, and we couldn't get out the door because of the pressure of the storm for at least an hour. And by about 6, we were starting to get a little light. The pressure was dropping off. We opened up this door and saw this hanging down there and said, who do you It was scary. Were you worried about, I mean, as far as dealing with the storm itself right before the tower happened, was there any concern for your own safety at that time? No, not really, but it was really blowing down here. Things were rocking and rolling all over the parking lot and so on. You could see out through the windows. But we weren't, uh, uh, we felt very secure. Um, did it shake? I mean, did it... Did no, it the, building, the building didn't shake. Well, the building shook when this came down across it, of course, but that was the only time that the building uh, moved at all. The building is quite solid. What does it sound like? I mean, is there a sound that you can just compare it to? I, I hate No, that. I can't tell you on the falling, but I can say this, that uh, when, the, when the wind was reported at about 165 miles an hour, it was whistling through the tower when the tower was still up, like a choo-choo train. I mean, it was making a loud noise, like there was a train coming right through the parking lot, which is normal even in a, in a, in a light uh, blow. You know, the wind going through here just whistles and howls, but when it's 165 miles an hour, you really hear it. Were you guys stuck out here for a while? I mean, kind we of had, isolated? Yeah, we couldn't, uh, we couldn't get out of the compound. Uh, by the time things freed and the rain had dropped off a little bit, I took my motor home over here and we put an uh, aircraft cable on the trailer hitch and we had to pull the front gate off, yank it off of its mounting, and then use the, um, the uh, tie line also to pull all of the trees that had gathered at the front out of the way so we could drive out of the compound. And that was only half of it, because once we got out of here, we couldn't get to our houses and homestead because the streets were all blocked with us that day. Can you give me your name, sir? In the My name is Gordon Smith, S-M-I-T-H. <laughs> and title? And I'm assistant chief engineer with Channel 6. I'm responsible for the same. Thanks, Mr. Smith. All right. You, you may hold this? Or? Uh, I got it. It's all right, okay. man. You can just talk to me. So what were you doing uh, right before it happened? What, how many people were out here, and uh, were you, like, just batting down the hatches for the uh, hurricane? Is that basically what you were doing before it fell? We come out early in the afternoon and, uh, and picked up things around the outside and basically tied everything down, and, and then, we, then we went inside and waited. I had, there was, there were, uh, there was actually, uh, there was only two of, two of us engineers out here, uh -huh. and then then when the storm came, uh, it, it sounded like uh, it was a real real strong wind. It sounded like a, uh, a freight train going through, and, and all I could hear was I could hear uh, something hitting the side of the building. Uh, I later. Uh, determined that what it was was hitting the building. We have a, this uh, uh, avocado field over here that was full. I mean, it was had many, many bushels. I mean, well, just a lot of bush, fruit, huh? A lot of fruit on it. And it just sounded like, like somebody was just throwing stuff against the building. And, and it just took the tree and just it took the tree and just took all the leaves off. Um, so, so but, you're inside, and, and the storm is going. Was it? I mean, obviously it was a frightening time, but it sure I mean, was. Did, did the building shake? Did you have any kind of warning this thing was going to come down at all? No, no, we didn't. Um, there was large gusts, and then, then it died down. And I would say we, would, I don't know if the eye crossed over this or, or what. We were in, we were in good shape. We had lost. Uh, we had lost power. We lost our emergency generator through um, through an overspeed. We don't know what caused that, but we did. And it was after the calm when it came back again. That's when the tower came down. And it was lucky that we were in the section of the building 
that the uh, where the away from where the tower hit the building. What, what did it sound like? I mean, did, was there a lot of creaking and stuff, or did it just all of a sudden just explode, or what? No, I I knew something heavy had hit the hit the building. Uh, in fact, the the walls are still standing, uh, and. It just caved in the roof, and then water started pouring in. And I was talking to the other engineer, and the engineer was like, we really excited. We thought, well, something heavy fell off the tower. And so we couldn't get out to see. I mean, at that time, it was we was in a second. Uh, the second half of the storm. The second half of the storm. He was saying that the pressure from the storm made it like impossible for you to even open the door to get out to look. That's right. Yeah, we, we couldn't we couldn't even open the door. In fact, well, when the first time when it come through, we could open. When the first we could open the the north door. And but we couldn't open the south door. Then in the second phase of it, we couldn't open the. It just it flip flopped. And so I'm I'm assuming that even, even two of you guys, even two big guys, couldn't open this door. To, I mean, not no to, I no guess no, no way no way. I I would say. Um, I'd say we had, I'd say we had 160, 100, between 160, 170 mile an hour winds out here. Whistling through the tower? Well, that, well. I mean, the sound is mostly what I'm asking about. It must, I just we, can't we imagine couldn't, what the we, sound we couldn't hear, like. couldn't hear any whistling. All we could hear was, uh, was rumble. Uh, like, there, there's no windows, uh, there's very few windows in this building. And. When when we lost power away, it's just scary in there. <laughs> I'll bet. I'll bet. Well, what else you need? <laughs> Did it shake at all when it when it landed? Did you feel the build, the ground shake at all, or was no 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 uh no no shaking of the ground at all? Like we just or it was just covered up from um, just the regular storm noise. The regular huh? storm, yes. I got gotcha. you. I had no idea. In fact, in fact. Uh, after the wind died down, uh, Gordon, the other engineer, the, 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 uh, the director of engineering out here, I mean, transmitter chief, right? He got to, he come walked over to the door and he says, Racist, come over here. He says, I'm going to show you something. And I looked out that door and, and well, it was, it, it, I, I, I was speechless. I, you ever seen a tower fall before? No, I haven't. I never want to see another one fall again. Never. <laughs> I don't blame you. At least this close. <laughs> hey, listen, can you give me your name, sir, and how to correctly spell it? Uh, my name is Ray Schumacher. Okay. Uh, what else? You want? Your last, uh, last name, name spelling, yeah. S C H U M A C H E R. All right. And I have I've been working for Channel Six. Uh, I'm in my 14th year. All right, Mr. Schumacher. Thanks. I'm How tall is this thing again? It's 1849. It was the tallest tower in, in uh, South Florida. It was the tallest one? Yeah. But I think any tower in this area would have come down with that kind of a wind. Yeah. Listen, thanks. I've got, I've got plenty of tape. And so okay. I just needed a quick shot of you coming over here. Okay. I appreciate it. Man. All righty. Yeah, you can go ahead and walk out there, man. That's all right. Okay, let me get a shot. See the pole is warped too, so that's the end of it. 
doesn't surprise me it's warped, but yeah. the antenna, antenna is a complete loss. You couldn't even use it again for anything. Generate a start. Channel 6 WCIX Tower around uh, 4.30 in the morning. It was a terrible thing. We wish we could have been there live for you, but we're here today for showing you the aftermath of Hurricane Andrew. It was a, it was a terrible thing. Uh, two engineers were inside this very room during the whole storm. Uh, they survived. Physically, they're okay. Mentally, I don't think so. But anyway, uh, this is where the airspace uh, communication shack used to be, advanced radio. We're going to do here. We're going to be on here tonight, don't worry. Some service on for the, the air, people in this area. Of course, they need emergency communications. I don't think there'll be any uh, uh, phone service or interconnect service uh, because of the phone lines are just down throughout the whole area. And of course, there's no power. We'll be running our generator perhaps for the next three months. So uh, what they're going to do uh, is hook up the radio system for emergency communications and everybody will have uh, dispatch service in this area. So once again, we're at work here, tower crew's here, uh, Lou and the rest of the crew are here, and uh, of course by this afternoon, the system's going to be online. Fortunately, uh, Shaq was very lucky it didn't sustain any damage. Right, Florida, I'm Stephen J. Gray. We're here at the Channel 6 Tower looking at some of the uh, damage 
This was a preamp, ladies and gentlemen, that was a thousand feet on the tower. Look at this. It survived. A thousand foot drop. And it's still working. Well, it will be working very shortly on our new 120 foot tower. Hold on a second, please. What do you guys think of this? Okay, this is one of the Bogners. It's evidently 80% uh, of it buried into the ground. As the tower fell, it definitely uh, went pretty uh, deep down. This is the inside. We'll try to get a close up. I think. Don't mind, I'm not a TV person. It's a terrible thing. But, it looks uh, like some of this stuff is buried like a good uh, 8 to 10 feet in the ground. Now, there's another, there's another Bogner further down here. As you can see, it's everything's all an absolute wreck. We got very fortunate recovering that tower top preamp. Very, very. That, it uh, was unbelievably. That's the most uh, intact piece of gear. I almost gear. gave up on it, but I found it, and it was unbelievable. I think yeah. there's not a piece of the Bogner right here. That's the most intact piece of gear I've seen on, uh, on the top. Yeah, here's the other Bogner. I can tell from the fiberglass. Obviously, history. Unrecoverable. How much is that Bogner worth? Uh, a couple thousand, I think, three or four thousand. I see some STL antennas in here. Yeah, a lot. Uh, there's a, there's a uh, DV system UHF antenna. This is a example of what the ground looked like. There's a puddle of water in there, and it goes in there pretty deep. It's a long ways. We're walking along the approximately 800 foot mark of the tower. We might be able to find the other tower top preamp on the other side of the building, though. That was at like 500 foot. Can we still roll on tape? Yeah. Okay, here we found one of our 1,000 foot Bogners. The vice of it got ripped off. I don't know where it's at, but this is like the uh, upper th three quarters of the, uh, of the Bogner. And, uh, Here's our serial number for uh, paperwork purposes. Can't zoom in on this too well, can I? Well, I'm a macro. What's wrong with this thing? So this is the serial number 0593. The macro's not working or something. Huh. Well, anyway, it's, it's uh, 0593. I think you might see it. This looks like a UHF station master. Here we have an, uh, another distant shot of the tower, laying on the building. Oh, okay.
sure. 